Good evening, everybody. Steve Hughes here to jump in with you guys, and we're going to discuss topic five, DQ1, this evening. First of all, this is discussing statistics. So we're going to be talking about the min, the max, the median, the average, which is the mean, and the standard deviation. And then we're going to talk a little bit about how to draw conclusions from the data. Now, in order to do that, I want to bring your attention to something here, because sometimes we're concerned about what the data means, or we misunderstand what the data means. So check this out with me right here, everybody. Okay, right here. The part I want you to notice is this. It says, if the well water improved, we expect that there would be less E. coli after treatment. So that improvement equals after minus before would be negative, would be negative. For example, if after before on well number one is negative 10, we then suspect that there are 10 fewer E. coli per milliliter than there were before the treatment. So it's good to have negative numbers, okay? Just to know that right up front. All right, let's go take a look at what we're going to be doing now. Okay, so first things first, everybody go ahead and put your name in the box, in the blue box. All right, here we go. My name is in the blue box. Next, we're going to go to the improvement data, and we want after minus before. Now, everybody, look. What if happens if I put the wrong thing in there? Watch this. Watch. I put before. That's D4 minus E4. And look at the outcome. It didn't change colors, okay? It gave me a 15, which is positive, which means there was more E. coli, right? More. It's worse. So let's not do that. Let's change it and put it the correct formula. Okay, so the correct formula then would be what? You got it. Equals, just take your mouse and click on it, right? Equals E4 minus, oops, not equals, minus D4. All right, and it comes out negative, which means there are 15 fewer E. coli uh, parts per milliliter, right? So that's good. Now watch, everybody. I'm not going to copy and paste this. I have a formula that can be dragged all the way down. I'm not going to drag it. I'm going to put my mouse in the lower left-hand corner here. When that little white square turns to a black plus, see that change? Boop. See that? It looks like a black plus, a black plus sign. Now just double-click left mouse button, and it's filled in all the way, and I'm done. All right, next. Remember, we're going to do the mean, and the mean is the average. That tells us the average improvement in the wells, right? So that is equals average. And you can see the formula shows right up there for us. Tell us we're using the right thing here. And that's what we want. All right. And what column do we want to put in there? That is before. So that is D. So I'm just going to go D colon D close parentheses. All right. And it changes colors. Next one, I want the median. So I'm going to go equals median, open parentheses, once again, D colon D. All right, close parentheses. All right, standard deviation. It says we have two options. Uh, we can use stdev.s, that is the sample, or stdev. I'll go ahead and use the stdev here. So uh, equals stdev. All right, and then D colon D. All right, and last but not least, we want to find the range. Remember, the range is the difference between the maximum and the minimum. So I'm going to type in equals max, and that again be D colon D. When I, when I type in D colon D, that just simply takes in all the numerical values, only numerical in column D. All right, that's what it does. And then minus the min, and then D colon D, and hit enter. 
All right. And I'm good to go. I forgot my parentheses, so it showed me an error. Okay. Now, for those of you who watch the video, here's the key. Watch this, guys. I'm not going to type anymore. I'm going to highlight this column right here. I'm going to highlight this column. I'm going to drag this lower right-hand button across, and I'm all done. Beep. What? That's what I'm talking about. That's the power of Excel, everybody. I just calculated eight values with a drag of my mouse. Okay, now I'm going to do one of the percentiles and only one. Okay, so it says here I can use percentile.ink or percentile. I'm going to use percentile.ink. Okay, so for equals PER, you can see it tried to show up here for me. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the one that I want. And that is for the improvement data. So that is F colon F. And hit enter. What did I forget? Oh, I forgot my numerical value. Okay, that's it. I forgot to put in the percentile. It was 0.16. It was 16%. 0.16. Oh, am I good? Yep, there we are. 0.16. And I put a, a period rather than a comma. So you guys see what not to do, right? And there you go. Let's see what I got going on here. Okay. I entered it as a whole number instead of a percentile. So percent. There we go. 0.16. Now we're good to go. That tells me that at the 16th percentile, I will have... 15 parts per million E. coli less, okay? Parts per milliliter, so that's really good. Now, I'm gonna let you guys do the next one. It's the exact same formula, just using the 18th, uh, 84 percentile. All right, now, I'm gonna do the upper limit. This is now talking about the empirical rule, and it says that uh, one standard deviation contains 68% of the data. So what I'm trying to calculate is the upper and the lower data. That would be the one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below the mean. That's what the empirical rule says, that 68% of the data lies within plus or minus one standard deviation of the mean. I'm going to calculate the lower. And did you guys hear what I just said? I said it is the, the plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean. So I'm going to go to the improvement data. I'm doing the lower one. So I'm going to do the mean, right? The mean minus one standard deviation and hit enter. And there I've got it. So one standard deviation below, okay? You guys can see that the 16th percentile is a negative, fi or negative 15. The 68th percentile is negative uh, 15.7. So... It's a, not too far off from that. All right, so I'm going to let you guys do the upper limit, right? Remember, the 68% is minus one standard deviation plus one standard deviation. And I just did the lower one. It was the mean minus the standard deviation. I know that you guys, with that idea, can get the upper one, okay? Now, next thing, everybody. It wants me to interpret the data. Remember, we mentioned that earlier. We're going to interpret it and see what it, what it means. It says, as a check for understanding, complete the following sentence by replacing the indicated, that is the red, with the correct values in the box below. So right down here, I would start typing. About number of wells showed a reduction between the lower limit and the, uh, the lower bound and the upper bound. You just calculated the lower limit and the upper limit, right? That's what that's talking about. Now, what's that number it's talking about right there? What is that? This guy right here, right? What is that number? How many wells are in there? You say 68%, right? That's exactly right. 68% of the wells. Well, how do I calculate this? Scroll down here. It says 68% within one standard deviation. That is the mean plus or minus the standard deviation. 68% of 75, we don't have 75. This is just an example for you guys, okay? This says, suppose we had a data set where there were 75 items. 68% would be 68% of 75, which would be 51, okay? That's what you're looking for. But the number is not 75. It's the number in our data in column 
F, the improvement. Okay, that's what you're looking for. All right, next, once you get that, it says, what if anything do your calculations of part four tell you about the effectiveness, okay? Was it effective? Remember, everybody, if the numbers are coming out negative, it was effective, okay? I'm going to leave you guys with that. Take care. Have a great rest of your evening, and I'll see you guys in the forums. Bye.